Cheers and Happy New Year to all. I want to talk about today the issue with bins and especially going back and forth between different workspaces. If you don't have these bins numbered, lined up in the same way with different workspaces, what happens is if I go to a color correcting workspace, you see the bins like sort of pop out, the, everything gets all messed up. So I want to show you a way around this that I figured out. What it took me a while to realize is that these bins actually have numbers. And so what happens is when you go in between the different workspaces, if you have bin number six and I lock this into place here and then I go to a color correction mode workspace, bin number six isn't locked into anywhere. The Avid doesn't know where this bin was supposed to go. So I'm going back to my source record workspace here and I'm gonna show you how I try to set up every bin, every project now from now on. So one thing to think about is the difference between closing a bin in a bin or the bin container, that's it, the bin container, right? This is bin container number five, which I can close with that X, or I can close right here, I can close the bin, but not the bin container, right? That stays open here. So the way I've been doing it is, let's do this right here. I'm gonna take this bin three, put it over here. So if you look over here from the left, I have bin number one, I have bin number two over here with my footage, and I have bin number three right here. So the way I've been doing it, I'm gonna close this bin number five. Now for every show I have, I have three bin containers. What I have over here on the, in bin number one is my stuff bin and my current masters sequences, something like that. And usually in this bin number three, I have some sort of graphics or elements type bin that I'm using a lot, maybe dragging, dropping my effects bin into a folder here. And number two is what I use for my footage bin. So different types of footage. So now instead of me, like let's say opening a bin right here and saying, all right, here's my new bin and I'll close that and move this over here, bin number four, whatever. I don't do this anymore. I am only gonna have these three bin containers, one, two, and three. So now I'm going to be more diligent about clicking which bin container I want to open the bin in. So I want my footage bin to go in here. And let's say I wanted my After Effects to go in here. I would make sure that this little button was clicked and then I would open After Effects. Now, if for some reason I forgot to do that and now I have this bin number four, I can Alt drag this into a bin. If I click up here, click Alt, you see this little light green line there? That sort of gets in there and that gets rid of that big container. So that's another way to do it too. But I am definitely much more diligent about when I open bins, I'm clicking which container I want the bin to go into. And now, of course, the big key is you wanna save this workspace. So this is my edit workspace and I'm going to save current. And now I have a keyboard shortcut between my color correction mode and my source of curve mode. I go to color correction mode. Bins are kind of all over the place, right? Whenever I saved it last time wasn't the correct way. So let's go and do this right now. I want my bin number one to be all the way to the left here of this timeline. Bin number two to be up here. And I want that bin number three to be open. So let me open something, doesn't really matter what. Let's open uh, graphics and bin number three. I want it to be right here. Now what's happened here is the differences and let me, let me put this because my color correction mode, I want this to be in between. So now in theory, my color correction mode and I can maybe even slide this. Let's see how it Avid does here with, with remembering this stuff. And I want my audio tool, even though I won't use it for color correction mode, I'm concerned that Avid will get confused by this going back and forth. So now I have this color correction mode set up. Bin one, bin two, and bin three. And I'm going to save this workspace. So now when I keyboard shortcut, I go back to source and record mode. Okay, looks good. I got my bins, one, two, three, and I go back to color correction mode and there is no flopping bins. There's no bins hanging out. So let's do it again just to show you really quick. If I open something and make this into bin number four and have this come out and, and say I had a different bin mode before. Now if I go into color correction mode, you see this bin is now flopping around. It has nowhere to go. Avid doesn't remember the workspace. So there's something very connected connected to, it took me a long time to realize this, what the number of bin containers are in your workspace. So just something to think about when I'm closing any of these bins here in the future, I'm closing bins, not this bin container. I want this bin container to be here forever. And I can even open a bin here and then say, oh, let me put it there. So the bin container stays there. Again, I don't want this bin four. And this is what I'm using now 
constantly, always been one, been two, been three. And hopefully this will save you time so you can drink more beer. That's what this whole YouTube channel is about. That's what the Avid Beer course is about. So the only question that remains is what kind of beer are you going to drink? Over the holidays, I took a road trip up into New England to see some family, and I had an IPA that I enjoyed very much called Sea Hag IPA from the New England Brewing Company. I actually got it in Hartford, Connecticut, where my good friend Terrence McCauley tells me is the insurance capital of the world. And it is. If you go there, you will see tremendously huge insurance buildings, large insurance buildings, something to see. So I look forward to 2023. More Avid Tips, more more avid beer selections. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.